What I would like to do is read a quote from the Canadian Water Network's study on um, arsenic and, and the problem we have there. Okay. In 2010, Dr. Cullen of the Canadian Water Network studies found arsenic concentrations are elevated in Long Lake as a result of acid rock drainage and other chemical processes associated with mine waste. The high arsenic levels are associated with high concentrations of sulfate. The arsenic is available to bivalves and presumably other biota. Potential sources of arsenic to Long Lake identified by Quinsum Coal Company include surface runoff impacted by the two south, three south, and four south areas, the Long Lake Seep, and seepage from, ta from the tailing settling ponds. Quinsum Coal 2010, that's the source. So we do have a problem. Arsenic, it's not just that arsenic is sitting down there. It's available to biota, which is available to the fish. It's a problem. If we look at the history of mining, it's not very pretty. Uh, to put a mine, a coal mine, that close to such a very, very, very sensitive river. The Quinsum is not very big. The water is by nature very soft. Uh, and in the fall, uh, when they're discharging, the river goes very low. It can't dilute very well. When the company first started operating, their permit allowed them to discharge effluent six months a year, and that was during the wet parts of the year, when the river could dilute it better. But since they, they couldn't keep the water out of the mines, so they have to pump water, they have to release uh, water every month. Uh, they had three permits when they first started, and they couldn't comply with any of them. They couldn't keep their discharges with 180 days a year. They couldn't keep their pH uh, within uh, uh, allowable limits, and they couldn't keep their uh, maximum daily flow into the daily into the limits as well. They would have literally hundreds, hundreds of permit violations a year, which we documented and complained about. One by one, they changed all three of those permits. Uh, so that Quinsum Coal didn't have to change the effluent. It, they just raised the permit on each one and then they were in compliance and didn't have to do the thing. They were very proud of that. But, but our concern is with the future. Our concern is that originally they mined the soft, low sulfur coal. And sulfur is where the problem is. Uh, and that's all gone now. So now they're mining high sulfur coal and there's more sulfates and the sulfates lead to, they're a conduit to the arsenic. Uh, and so it is, the clock is ticking and I don't know where it's going, but it's, it's of concern to us, yes. When the Quinsum coal mine opened in 1987, the company promised 246 full-time, permanent jobs. Throughout the 80s, the number of jobs at the mine never exceeded 50. In the 90s, the numbers employed at the mine ranged from 75 in 1990 to 230 in the peak year of 1998. Since then, employment plummeted to fewer than 50. It was 2006 before they exceeded 100 again. Presently, Quinsum employs about 140 people. Acid mine drainage from an abandoned open pit copper mine on Mount Washington poisoned the Solom River. In 2000, after repeated efforts at restocking salmon failed, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans declares that the Solom is a dead river and abandons all projects. In the late 80s, 1.5 million was spent on a gravel cover. The project was deemed a failure. In 2009, the government spent $4.5 million to cover the mine permanently.
Today, the water quality and the fish are back, but the taxpayers paid $6 million to clean up the mess on Mount Washington. At Toquart Bay, on the west coast of Vancouver Island, in Barclay Sound, just down the road from Euclid, a popular campground and marina has been closed. Contamination by arsenic and other chemicals that probably came from an iron ore mine that closed in the 60s has been discovered. The contaminant that is most concerning to health officials is arsenic. Arsenic is found in many minerals and can be poisonous in small doses or even fatal to humans. The cost of the cleanup is unknown, but rest assured, the taxpayers of British Columbia will be paying for it.